Alright, what's going on? Another ROM hacking tutorial. We're going to be uh, doing a bit of overworld editing as well as text editing. We're going to be moving NPCs around and all that kind of good stuff. Um, so I'm going to be using my uh, Black 2 Kaizo version as a demo. I'm going to be showing you guys how you can do your own edits for your Gen 5 ROM hacks. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned to watch the whole thing. I'm going to go over everything in detail. We're going to want to open up our tutorial that we've been working on, so everything that you want is going to be linked in the description. If you've been following along with the series, you, everything else should make sense so far. If you haven't learned encounter editing or trainer editing yet, I'd highly recommend going back and watching those so you'll understand how to use the tools we've been, we're going to use today. So to get started, we're going to uh, first we need a couple tools open. We need CTR map. So CTR map is a program that lets you edit basically everything involving the overworld. Um, so we're going to launch that. So to, to start, it'll pop up with this window. We're going to go games. We're going to go add ROM. So this is the ROM we're going to be working on. We did this last time as well. Let's open up uh, black2 edited trainers.nds. All right. And we're going to confirm. We're going to extract that. All right. And then it makes a copy of the ROM so that you can edit it and then save it um, and not mess up an older version, which is great. But we're going to make a new demo for this. Um, okay, what you're going to do is go to tutorial, uh, CTR map, say a new folder, and then we're going to go into overworld edits. Alright, so just make it whatever you want. You have to have a folder for it, so boom, select folder. And scroll down to the bottom where it says uh, the game that you want. So ours is Black 2 Edited Trainers, Extracted, and hit Initialize Project. All right, so now you'll see it right here, Overworld Edits. We're going to open that up. It's going to tell you that it's an experimental build. Be careful, blah, blah, blah. And that's actually going to become really important today. So right now we're looking at a blank screen, so we're going to go to Zone Loader. So if I go to, like, Castelia City here, you see, like, if I go to 37, this is uh, this is like a part of the city. So let's just go look at Route 19 since that's the beginning of the game. Unfortunately, you have to kind of like search around and find out where it is. So let's look at Route 19 here. Uh, and so it should load it. This is Zone 437. So if we go to World Editor, um, it'll probably pop up like this. If you want to switch back and forth between these two views just hit F5. Uh, it doesn't really say that anywhere, so uh, F5 is your best friend here. Um, and once you're in this little uh, window, there's a bunch of things you can do. Also, if you hit F5, go here. If you hit Shift and use your WASD keys, you can move around, so you can like pretend you're in the map. It looks a little weird, but uh, it's helpful if you need to test out like what happens if you walk over a certain tile or something. We're going to go to this little button up here, this little trainer, and that will open our uh, editor on the side so if I click on someone like let's say Bianca right here um, it tells me the script this uses script 2000 is like a specific script that uh, I'm not sure how to edit with CTR map I'm not sure if you can access them but you will see a bunch of scripts that are in the single digits maybe double digits if there's a lot of NPCs and these will do something uh, in the map so for the example, this guy, when you talk to him, I'm pretty sure all he does is talk to you. So what you're going to want to do, let's go to your event editor, and this edits uh, your events. So events are things like NPCs and what and how you interact with them. They're, they're called events. They're different from like the background. Like Every tile here has something special about it, like can I walk on it? Is it a surf tile? Is it Can I not walk here because it's like a tree or something? These guys are different, so they're, they're called events. What we want to do is attempt to decompile. Now, there's a warning here that says this can permanently destroy non-user coded scripts. This is not a joke. It does destroy your scripts if you're not careful. So sometimes it does that. I don't know why. Um, but that's the way it goes. So we're going to open this in IDE, and this is like a decompile of what is going on behind the scenes with the scripting. So let's go back here and look at this over here it says script 3 so this NPC uh, will trigger when you click on them uh, scripts number 3 so let's go here and we'll go we'll look for uh, public static void main underscore 3 so you have to scroll down a little bit but some things you can recognize right away are um, 
the message boxes. It says message.npc message and the number you're going to be interested in to know what text message it is is uh, this one right here. So it says 15, it says 14, it says 12. Okay, so let's go take a look at what those are. So 12, he's telling us about ledge jumping. Um, he says, oh, watch me carefully from the top of the ledge. Okay, so obviously when you talk to this guy, he's going to jump off of the ledge. And if you want to change the message that someone says, you can either change this number or you can go back here and change text. So changing text is actually very easy. Um, you just have to uh, basically just type in here what you want them to say. However, you have to parse it yourself. So if you're using Microsoft Word or something, it does all like if you hit if you type enough characters it goes to the next line it doesn't do that automatically here you have to tell it to do that so um, right here it says O and then slash C slash N um, so slash C uh, clears what's on the message bubble and then slash N goes to a new line so one thing you'll see is that slash C is at the end of every single one of these messages um, and what that does is it prompts the user to click the A button or the B button. Um, otherwise, the message will just come onto the screen and instantly disappear as soon as it hits the end, and the player won't have time to read it. So you always want to have slash C at the end. Um, it's backslash C. Um, and you want to do slash N every time you run out of enough characters. So it's a good thing to look at uh, how many characters are between each slash n, so this is about as many as you can get on one line, and they have to do slash n. You're gonna have to experiment with this and see, like, okay, does it run off the end? Does it look a little awkward? You gotta test it out for yourself. So, um, let's see. So we can do that. We can tell. We can do different things. That's really easy to do. Um, and each zone has its own script reference, it has its own text reference. So if I'm in route 19, I reference the text uh, dump of 601, and so that's this one right here. If I go to like, let's say 600, uh, this is somewhere else in the game, I don't actually know where it is. Um, it looks like they're restoring your Pokemon. Um, so there's all sorts of different uh, text files and there's 675, 676 of them. Uh, another thing that there is is the game text. So this is different from the script text. So script text is uh, local to a specific part of the game, like an area, where game text, on the, however, has a bunch of different word banks, let's say in text uh, file 0, you can see these are things that are used uh, in specific parts, so the, you know, uh, like the types, a uh, different amount of hours, you know, some gym leaders. And if you go down here in the bottom left hand corner, it says dump all. Uh, and this is really useful because uh, you can save everything as a text file. You can't control F anything here. But if you download it, uh, or dump it rather, as a plain text file, so we're going to just do call it game text and it should just save All right. now I can go in here and boom there we go it says text file 0 now I can control F and I think oops, control F and if I go text, text file and I think 381 is a important one uh-huh yeah so text file 381 this is the text that plays when you encounter a trainer. So like when they have exclamation point over their head and they walk up to you and initiate the battle, it's this text file that you are going to be editing. So let's take a look at uh, 381 and this is like the different things they say. They're like, oh, like come battle me or uh, so tough or something. Like, you know, you can have them say something snarky. I don't know, whatever you want to do for your ROM hack. Um, text file uh, 382 is also very important. This gives you the names of every trainer in the game. I think I changed some of them in my hack to be like real life people, like some world championships, you know, like Wolf Glick or whatever, because I put his world championship team in my game. And if you keep going, so 383, 
you will get different trainer classes, right? So I have, you know, there's Blue, there's Lance Volkner. You can change the name of them. You can change the name of trainer class. So instead of like um, school kid, you could change it to be like like stupid kid or something, you know, whatever. Uh, and whenever you're done, just uh, be sure to uh, click off the thing you're typing in and then just hit save and it'll save the text file that you're in. Let's take a look at route 20. So one thing that you can do is uh, move these guys around. If you want to change what direction they're facing, uh, there's a way to do that. So it says orientation right here. This says north, south, east, and west. This is the direction that the NPC starts at when you walk into the area. So if I walk from the left over here into Route 20, this guy will start facing north. If I change it to south, it will be, and hit save, okay look, now he's facing south, good. But the move code is what matters. So different NPCs have different move codes. So the way to remember it is 14 is up, 15 is down, 16 is left, and 17 is right. So it's up, down, left, right, uh, and it starts at 14. So because this is a trainer, uh, 14 means he's looking actually looking straight up. So you're going to want this uh, to be, if I want him to look down, I want to change it to 15. If he's a trainer, you also want to have behavior equals one. Uh, that will allow him to actually initiate the battle. And then if you scroll down here, you'll have parameter zero. This is the number of site tiles. So you can see if I put him right here, one, two, three, he'll block the bridge. This script is not the same as the others. He has a 3000 script. The 3000 scripts are all uh, unique to the trainer. So if I want to know which trainer this is, I'm going to need another tool. So that's where we're going to go back into our tutorial folder and we're going to open up um, the Gen 5 Trainer Editor, which is BWTE. All right, boom, this opens up. So I know just off the top of my head that this guy is Youngster Terrell, so I can just type into BWTE, uh, T E R R E L. And you'll see that this says 164, and you'll see that this says 164. You can go to text file um, in your dumped folder and go to, uh, instead of this, go to 383, this should, or 382. This should have um, the different names of your trainers. And so if you want to change the trainer's name, you have to go into this and do it. So 164, it says Terrell right here, um, right here, next to Terrell. So if I wanted to change that, I'd have to go into CTR map and uh, go into my game text, go into 382, and scroll all the way down to where the uh, 164 is. There he is, Terrell. I can change him to, I don't know, like, James or something. I recommend using a text file like this to control F. It's just so much easier um, than trying to find it in the actual editor itself. So let's take a look at um, what we can do with him. So once you have him set up here, uh, there's a bunch of options like double battle or triple battle or single battle or rotation battle. There's a well-known bug with double battles that if you have one trainer activating a double battle, it will crash your game. So you're going to want to avoid that, and there's an easy way to do that. Um, it's kind of a weird workaround, but it certainly works. So I'm going to click on this guy. We're going to keep track. He is number seven on the entity list. And then I'm going to hit plus right here. This will create a new entity, uh, and it will have basically no parameters. We're going to want to make him identical to this one right here. 3164 64, and we're going to want him facing south with move code 15 since that's south behavior is 1 and I always set the dimensions equal to 0 and then we're going to have 3 uh, sight line. We're going to hit save and then what we're going to do is we're just going to stack them on top of each other and so it's going to activate two NPCs instead of just one. Uh, and so it will look a little bit weird. You won't have any text boxes. It won't reference the uh, trainer text correctly, so there'll just be a blank dialog box, but it will not crash your game. 
Uh, there are some other patches that people in the community have made to like fix this issue, but this is what I did for my hack because uh, I was not aware of them at the time. You can also change things called warps. So there's this thing called the warp tool. Uh, I don't think there, there is one warp over here. And so the warp tool will uh, allow you to change where you go when you like exit or enter a door or something. Usually you don't want to change a transition type because that has to do with like you know what kind of, of an entrance it is. Is it a door? Is it like a Pokemon Center? They all look different. So the target zone you'll see is uh, 447. And so let's take a look at where that is. So we go 447. Um, we'll say yes, we want to keep our changes. So this is Verbank Gate. All right, so this, this is cool. This is where it sends us. And you'll notice that there are 0 and 1. So there's two different warps. This one on the left is 0, and the one on the right is 1. And they will send you to a different uh, zone, depending on which one you walk into, obviously. Let's say we're coming into it from the left. We want to make sure we're going into the left warp, not the right warp. Otherwise, it would look really weird. And this warp on the left right here is, num is number 0, right? So if we go here uh, back to route 20, oops, uh, we'll see that this reference is right here, target warp is 0. So that's the 0th warp. Um, if it were target warp 1, I'd warp onto the right side, and that would look really weird. So we don't want that. Um, so you can change where you're going. You know, if you want to skip a whole area of the map, you can just uh, delete the warp to it or make the warp go somewhere else. So the other thing you can do is change triggers. And so triggers are basically areas of the map that start a script. And so here's one. Uh, when you walk onto this one, uh, Charon, I think your rival will come up to you and be like, hey, have you heard of like the tall grass uh, here? It's dark and you can find different Pokemon in it, blah, blah, blah. They'll like give you a little chat. And so what this does, is it triggers this script 3. So the same way we went to see what the youngster on Route 19 did, you go just go into your zone loader here, and uh, event editor open in IDE, and you can edit the script there, but I don't recommend doing that because it can break your game. Um, yeah, so it's the script's there, uh, and this just kind of shows where it is. So if you want to make your own trigger, if you get the scripting to work, this is the way you want to do it. That's about all you really need to know for the basics of um, for the basics of CTR map. I hope you found this at least a little bit helpful. Um, and let me know in the comments if there's other things you'd like me to go over in the future. I'd be happy to cover any other ROM hacking thing that uh, you could think of. If I know how to do it, I'll be absolutely sure to make a video. So. Um, if this helped you, I'd appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel. I'll be making more of these soon, so um, see you in the next video.